in Genesis chapter 4. This morning, I'm going to tell you three tales of two sons. Three different stories in the Bible of two sons. And you're going to notice some interesting things that these all have in common. And you know what? I was actually laying in bed last night, and I thought of a couple other examples in the Bible of two sons that have some similar things that we could learn from uh, that didn't necessarily fit with this message. I, I probably could have made them fit, but I didn't know if we'd have time to cover all uh, five of those stories. But I've got three that I want to show you. There is some very important lessons that we can learn in here uh, concerning salvation, especially. Because, you know, have you ever heard people talk about, you know, how do you know what religion is true? There's so many religions. But the truth is there's really not that many. While there's a lot of names of religions... There's really only, you, you could put them into two categories maybe, uh, I think, and there's really not a lot of different religions. And we're going to show you in the Bible three different stories of two sons that I think you could say represent two different religions. One being a lie, one being truth. And so we're going to start out, we're going to look at two brothers named Cain and Abel, the first brothers that you ever see, two sons of Adam in Genesis chapter 4 verse 1 and it says and Adam knew his wife and she conceived and bare Cain and said I have gotten a man from the Lord and she again bare his brother Abel and Abel was a keeper of the sheep but Cain was a tiller of the ground and in process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord and Abel he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof, and the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Right here in this story, we see Cain and Abel. And you all know the story. If you've been around church, you've probably heard this story a thousand times. But we see in this story, Cain, he brings his offering. And what does he bring? He brings the work of his hands. He brings what he was able to produce. He brought what he was able to accomplish and gave that as an offering to God. And God looked at the work of his hands. God looked at what Cain was able to bring and God was not pleased. God did not respect that offering. It was unacceptable what Cain brought for an offering. Now, I don't know if you've ever been there before where you felt like you were not accepted somewhere. Maybe you visited a church and you didn't feel like those people accepted you or you, know, you got rejected. Maybe you asked somebody to marry you and they said, no, you got rejected. And it hurts, doesn't it? It can make you mad. And here in this story, Cain brings his offering to God, and I believe that Cain did the best he could. I mean, I believe he probably brought the best that he had, but God didn't accept it. Now, I know that sounds cruel and that sounds mean, but let me tell you, we have a just, a holy, and a righteous God, and if, it was, if he didn't accept it, it was because it was unacceptable. But then you have Abel, he brings a blood sacrifice. Abel, he brings something... He brings a lamb that he sacrifices. And I believe that Cain represents, what he, his offering represents works salvation. And you can put almost every religion into two categories. There's those who believe that you can work your way to heaven. People who think you just got to be good. You just got to do your best. Hey, as long as you never killed anybody or broken any of the big commandments, you're good. You'll make it into heaven. And I'm here today to tell you that work salvation doesn't work. The Bible says over and over again, it's not by works of righteousness, which we have done. And this idea of being able to work your way into acceptance with God has been going on since the time of Cain. He thought he could do good enough himself, but you know what? It wasn't good enough. There is nothing that we can offer God good enough for him to accept us. Why? Because we are all sinners and we come short of the glory of God. But Abel, in obedience, he brings a sacrificial lamb. Which I believe is a picture of salva salvation by grace through faith. I mean, Abel, he, just, he brings a lamb and sacrifices a lamb. 
I mean, who did the hard part there? Well, the lamb kind of got the bad end of that deal, didn't he? You know, Abel kind of gets off scot-free, it almost appears. But the truth is, what Abel did was obedient to what God wanted. What Abel did was acceptable. God had respect to his offering. And you know what? There's other, another teaching out there that says that salvation is through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. That it's not by any works that we've done. Just by faith and trust in Him. And you can put it all into those two categories right there. Those who believe it's by grace through faith. And those who in one way or the other, while people have all kinds of different ways, it all involves work. Just somehow working your way to heaven, being good enough, just like Cain and Abel. So work salvation, it doesn't work. Salvation by grace through faith, that's what works. That's what will get you into heaven, we see Abel was accepted, Cain was rejected, and what happened in this story? Cain, he doesn't get mad at God, he gets mad at Abel. And he kills his own brother. And what have we seen throughout history from religions who want to work their way to heaven? We see them persecuting and killing true believers, don't we? That has been going on since the beginning of time. I mean, all throughout history, we have all, there's all kinds of stories of massacres and things by religions against true religion, against true Christianity. I mean, just Baptist history itself, it's just, it's a bloody history. There's a great book out there known as The Trail of Blood, just Baptist history. We have been persecuted throughout history. Why? Because it's hard for people who work so hard to be good, okay? Kind of like, we've got two brothers here. I mean, and I, I never had a brother, but I see even with my own boys how competitive they get sometimes. And I, there's been times when Jason has outdone Tommy on some things, and Tommy just can't stand it. One story that I love to tell about them, that, just, that Tommy hates the story, he still gets mad when he thinks about it. Tommy was just starting to read. He was just starting to read. And I was trying to teach him you know, to just you know, read naturally like we all do. Just look at things and read them. And we were sitting at a restaurant and they had an exit sign there. And I asked him if he knew what that said. And he looks at it and he's, he gets a smart look on his face. He goes to try to, he's trying to sound it out. And Jason, who's not even started reading yet, he looks at it and he just goes, he had a real high voice. He's like, duh, exit. <laughs> and we were just like, that's right. <laughs> How did you know that? And, and, and Tommy's just, you know, and we're making this big deal. Well, the reason he knew, he'd been watching this cartoon where this kid's following this exit sign the whole movie, and he recognized an exit sign. It wasn't because he read it, he just, because he watches too many cartoons. <laughs> and, and, oh, Tommy was so jealous, and it still boils his blood to this day. We hate seeing ourselves outdone by someone we see as inferior and you know what? There are religious people all over the place that are good religious people that are working hard to get to heaven. Maybe they've been working their whole lives to get to heaven, and then they see somebody come along who maybe lived most of their life for the devil, and they come along and just have faith and put their trust in Jesus Christ, and He saves their soul, and He changes their life and blesses them, and they can't stand it. There is no way they're getting to heaven before I am. But I'm here today to tell you the only way to heaven is through the work of Jesus Christ. You have to put your faith and trust in Him. And religious people, good people, they can't stand it. What I, we call good. We know that there's none good other than Jesus Christ. And just like Cain did back then, he killed his own brother. People have persecuted people like us because of this simple plan of salvation. That it's by grace through faith, but it is the truth. And we are accepted today because of Jesus Christ, not because of us. And unfortunately, many people, they can't see past that. They look and they see God's acceptance of us. And, they, and looking at us, they're like, how can God accept them? Not understanding it's not because of anything we've done. It's because of what Jesus Christ did for us. The Bible says that Jesus Christ made us accepted. He was that acceptable sacrifice. It's, I'm not accepted by God today because I'm a Baptist. I'm not accepted by God today because I'm a pastor or because of any good thing I've done. I am accepted by God today because 
of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And boy, if people would get that in their head, it would make the difference in heaven and hell for them. But those who work for salvation have always attacked those who obtain salvation through faith. In 1 John chapter 3 and verse 11, it says, For this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. We know that we have passed from death unto life, because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. You said, marvel not if the world hate you. Just like Cain hated his own brother, the world will hate you. Why? Because our works are righteous, theirs are evil. Well, what work of ours is righteousness? Just saving faith in Jesus Christ and his work of righteousness? And you know what? That's hard for our, if we want to call them our older brothers, to accept. They don't like it, but it's truth. And they need, and like Jesus, or God told Cain, he said, hey, if thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted. Cain could have gotten saved. Cain could have been obedient to God. Cain could have sacrificed the lamb. He could have done like Abel, his brother. And those out there who are just religious today, they could put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ like us. They could be born again. But unfortunately, many people want to work. But God is not impressed with our works. He's not impressed. You might impress other people with your works. But God is not impressed by our works. Go to Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 12. I want to read a few verses of Scripture to you there. Hebrews 9 and verse 12. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by His own blood, He entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us, for if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctify to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. And that Old Testament, we talked about this a little bit in Sunday school. Okay, No one got saved from the Old Testament. No one got saved from that Old Testament law. Why? Because no one could keep it. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 4. You know, For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. God gave that Old Testament to show us that we needed a Savior. To show us that we were sinners. And our works cannot get ourselves into heaven. You cannot impress God with your works. You're, Jesus Christ is our only hope of salvation. But yet, today we still have Cain's and there's Abel's. You've got Cain's that are trying to work their way to heaven. You've got Abel's that are putting their faith and trust in an innocent lamb. The lamb of God, Jesus Christ. And that is... How you get to heaven? You're going to have to be like Abel, put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. So there's two brothers right there. Now I want us to look at two more brothers. And listen, hang on to your hats. I'm going to show, I'm going to show you something that's not going to make sense to you at first. But we're going to go to Galatians and we're going to clear it up. We're going to look at two brothers named Isaac and Ishmael. Go to Genesis chapter 21. Genesis chapter 21. I'll, I'm going to say some things. They're going to make me sound crazy like I don't know my history. But just, just hold on to your hats. It's all going to make sense here in a little bit. And the child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which she had borne unto Abraham, mocking. And if you, just a little history on this. God promised Abraham that he was going to have a son. He promised him. He promised him he was going to have a son by his wife, Sarah. Well, Sarah was too old to have children. And so Abraham thought he needs to help God out. And he went and he had a child by Sarah's handmaid, Hagar. Well, that was not what God had promised Abraham. God had promised him a son 
through Sarah. And so we have Ishmael that was born. And 13 or 14 years later, Isaac is born from Sarah, a miracle. I mean, at 90 years old, Sarah gives birth to Isaac. A miracle, folks. I mean, a supernatural act of God. Sarah having this child, Isaac. And so Isaac is now weaned. And here in the story, we see Ishmael, he's mocking Isaac. What that meant, I don't know exactly, but he's, he's bothering. We see, we're going to see later in the New Testament, you know, it, it, he's, he's persecuting them, okay? Wherefore, and then verse 10, Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son. For the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. And God said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad and because of thy bondwoman. In all that Sarah has said unto thee, hearken unto her voice. For in Isaac shall thy seed be called. In Isaac shall thy seed be called. Isaac was the promised seed, not Ishmael. Ishmael was not what God had promised. Isaac is what God had promised. And so they did, they, they sent her off. Now in this story, we've got two brothers again, all right, two sons, Ishmael, son of Abraham, Isaac, the son of Abraham, Ishmael, older than Isaac, Ishmael persecuting Isaac. And right there, that is a picture of, in the New Testament time, the Jews persecuted the Christians, didn't they? After uh, Christianity started, there was a lot of persecution um, from the Jews that they got. And in this story, Ishmael, this is where I'm going to sound crazy, Ishmael represents the Jews, the natural seed of Abraham, and Isaac represents the Christians, the spiritual seed of Abraham. Now, Ishmael represents the Jews, because we all know Ishmael is where the Muslims come from, right? Okay, and, I, and Isaac's where all the Jews come from, right? But Ishmael in this story represents the Jews, the natural seed of Abraham. Isaac represents the Christians, the spiritual seed of Abraham. And I know that sounds crazy, but now we're going to clear it up. Go to Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4 and verse 21. I didn't read that story and come up with that idea. I read... Galatians chapter 4 and came and came up with I, I never would have came up with that I'd have never thought of Ishmael representing the Jews the natural seed of Abraham but at Galatians chapter 4 verse 21 tell me ye that desire to be under the law do ye not hear the law don't you understand what the law says for it is written that Abraham had two sons the one by a bondmaid and the other by a free woman but he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh. You know there was nothing miraculous about the birth of Ishmael? There was nothing miraculous about that. It makes perfect sense. He was born after the flesh. But he of the free woman, talking about Sarah, was by promise. Okay, Isaac was born because of the promise of God that God gave Abraham. It was a miracle of God that Isaac was born. Which things are an allegory, for these are the two covenants. The one from Mount Sinai, that Old Testament. It was Mount Sinai where God gave Moses the law, where he gave him the Ten Commandments, that Old Testament. Okay, And then you got Isaac, the New Testament, the better testament that we looked at. So you got Mount Sinai, which gendereth to bondage, which is Agar. Or Hagar, in the, as it's spelled in the Old Testament. For this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and answereth to Jerusalem, which now is and is in bondage with her children. During Paul's time, Jerusalem remained in bondage, didn't they? Why? Because they, they didn't accept Jesus Christ. They were still trying to keep the law. And he mentioned, you that desire to be under the law... He tried to teach him, if you want to be under the law, understand that's fine, but you have to keep every bit of it, and that's impossible. And so he, uh, he goes on here, but Jerusalem, which is above, okay, Jerusalem from above, the heavenly Jerusalem, the spiritual Jerusalem, the, but Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, rejoice, 
thou barren that bearest not. Break forth and cry, thou that travailest not. For the desolate hath many more children than she which hath an husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. Did you see that? We, as Isaac, were that children of promise. Who, the Galatians, okay? Not, not the Jewish people, the Christians, the believers. Verse 29, but as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him, talking about Ishmael persecuting Isaac, that was born after the spirit, even so is it now. Those who are born of the flesh were attacking those who were born of the spirit. The older brother, jealous of the younger brother. Ishmael, the older brother, jealous because they're having a big celebration for Isaac. And he's jealous because, you know, Isaac did tend to be, seem to be the favored one with Abraham. And sure enough, after Jesus Christ came and God started moving amongst the Gentiles and saving the Gentiles, the Jews, the older brothers, they hated the younger brothers and they persecuted the believers, just like Ishmael and Isaac did. And then in ver uh, go on in verse... Um, 30, nevertheless, what saith the scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. And so one thing that we see here with Ishmael, you've got a natural seed of Abraham. You've got Isaac, the spiritual seed of Abraham. We see very clearly here in Galatians that those who are saved, those who are believers, we are that of Isaac. We are of that spiritual seed. And you know what? You get persecuted from those who are the natural seed. And in this case, he's talking about the Jews going after the believers. But you know what? Even today, there are people, you can kind of put the people in two classes. There's those who think they're going to heaven, maybe because of the family that they're from. Maybe they come from a good Christian family. You know, hey, my dad was a preacher. I know I'm going to heaven. Hey, it has nothing to do with your ancestry. It has nothing to do with what family that you're from. There's people, that, you know, even today, there's Jewish people that feel like, hey, we are the seed of Abraham. Therefore, you know, we're special. We're going to heaven. You can be a natural seed of Abraham, but it won't get you into heaven. And you can be from the best families around. You can have a great lineage. You can have saved parents on both sides. Your brothers and sisters can be saved. But if you've never received Christ as your Savior, you're lost and on your way to hell. You have to be a part of that spiritual family. Bloodlines don't matter one bit. But once again, those who came first often struggle with those who came later. Romans chapter 10 and verse 19 says, but I say, did not Israel know? First Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people and by a foolish nation. I will anger you. But Isaiah is very bold and saith, I was found of them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. But to Israel, he saith, all day long, I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. It was prophesied in the Old Testament that because the Jews were not listening to God, that he's, I'm going to go to a people that aren't even looking for me. And you know what? It's true we learn in the New Testament that it was God that came seeking after us. We love him because he first loved us. God initiated love. Okay? You might think you're looking for something. You might think you're looking for you know, truth and religion. But the truth is, what's stirring in your heart, it's from God. That's God looking for you. He want, and he wants to save you. And God did. He went and went to the Gentiles to provoke them to jealousy. And what was supposed to happen, they were supposed to see God moving amongst the Gentiles and saving Gentiles. And what it's supposed to do is cause them to say, you know what? I want that. I want what they have. And accept Jesus Christ. But you know what? They always want to make a big deal about them being the physical seed of Abraham. But it doesn't matter. You have to be of that spiritual seed. You have to be of Christ. Remember when John the Baptist was preaching, and say not unto yourself, you have Abraham as your father, for God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. No big deal. That doesn't matter to God, but to people, sometimes bloodlines mean everything. 
I talk to people sometimes all the time here in town, and you talk to them, and they think they're going to heaven because they're Catholic. And they look at that being Catholic like it's a, like it's a racial thing, something they were born with. Like, you can't change. And it's like, well, first of all, you can change that. Second of all, even if you are, that doesn't get you into heaven. I was born a Baptist. I was born in a, in a Baptist home, taught Baptist stuff, had a Baptist preacher for a dad. But being born Baptist isn't going to get me into heaven. Close. Not even close. It has nothing to do with bloodlines. The, but the religious crowd has always struggled with the born again crowd. Revelation, or Romans chapter 11, verse 7 uh, through 11, we see again where God said, I'm going to them to provoke you to jealousy. He's trying to get them to come back to him. But unfortunately, they don't, they don't ever seem to want to do it. Sometimes they do. There's many Jewish people that have received Christ as their Savior, and now they are the spiritual seed of Abraham, and they're on their way to heaven. And, th and thank God for that every time it happens. But God is not impressed with our lineage. Go to Galatians chapter 3. Galatians is the book that kind of clears a lot of this stuff up. Galatians chapter 3 verse 27. It says, For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ... Then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Like Isaac, the promised son. And we are heirs according to the promise. We are Abraham's seed if we are Christ. And there are many people today out there that are the physical seed of Abraham, but until they become the spiritual seed, then they're not going to make it into heaven. You don't get to heaven just because you're Jewish. You don't get to heaven just because Abraham's your great-great-great-great-grandfather. It doesn't work. We see in the Bible where the Bible refers to them as the natural branches. Okay, Why? Because they were the natural seed that were plucked off. But God is able to graft them in again. If they'll receive Christ as their Savior, God will save them just like He'll save you and me. They will become a spiritual seed of Abraham, not just a physical. But if, you're, if they're planning on being getting to heaven by being physical seeds, it's not going to work. And if you think you're going to get to heaven because of the family that you come from, because you come from a good family, you're, you know, you're got Baptists going all the way back to John the Baptist in your family line, not going to get you into heaven. I don't, care, I don't care if you find out you are a direct descendant of, well, John the Baptist didn't have any kids, so that wouldn't work, but of, of Peter himself. Okay? You will not get to heaven if you can prove that, it will not help you. You must be born again. Why do you have to be born again? Well, we find out why. Because there's two more sons that we're going to look at. Two more sons. One of them is a son of God known as Adam. I say, wait a minute. Adam, son of God? If you go to Luke chapter 3 and verse 38, Luke 3 gives the genealogies going from Jesus all the way back to Adam and it says, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. And Luke, it called Adam the son of God. Okay? But there's something a little different about this Adam than God's other son, Jesus Christ. Adam and Jesus. Now, who came first on earth? Well, Adam came in the flesh, right? Jesus was born way later, wasn't he? Okay, now what, what does Adam and Jesus have to do with anything? Well, in every, every one of these examples, not, it was the older one that was kind of the bad one, the younger one that was a good one. Jason would love this if he was here today. Uh, but uh, They're at their grandpa's church today. But, and also, the natural okay, was the bad one, and the spiritual was the good one. And Adam... Is he's this natural son of God. He was a creation of God. Something that God made, he formed from the dust of the ground. God gave him life. But look at what 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 21 says. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 21. So which brother are you? Are you of Cain or are you of Abel? Are, are you one that's trying to work your way into heaven? Or are you one who's put your faith and trust in Christ? Are you of Ishmael? Are you thinking you're going to get into heaven because of who your family is? Or are you of Isaac? You're, you're going to heaven because 
you've accepted Jesus Christ as a Savior. Or now are you of Adam? Are you of Jesus? And look what it says in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 21. It says, For since by man came death, uh, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, after they that are Christ that is coming. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. So right here we see a comparison. Uh, we see Adam, we see Jesus, and then jump down to verse 45. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. How be it? That was not first, which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and after that which is spiritual. Natural comes first, spiritual comes later, every time. And does anybody know what Adam, the name Adam means? It means earthy. Okay? He was made of the dust of the ground. Verse 47, the first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man, that's talking about Adam. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As in the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. Okay? As the, all of us in here today, we have some Adam in us, don't we? We were all born of Adam. We are all earthy. We are all sinful like Adam. We are all dying like Adam eventually died. We're sinners. We've fallen like Adam. We all have Adam in us. We all descended from Adam. Okay, as, and so as in the earthy, such are they also that are earthy, and as in the heavenly, such are they that are heavenly. Adam was that earthy seed. Jesus Christ was that heavenly seed. And verse 49, and as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption put on incorruption. Flesh and blood. There are people today, another big religion, probably one of the biggest ones in America today, is what I would call humanism. People who think they're going to go to heaven just because they're them. Because they're, you're you. Because you're a human. And you know, as a human, boy, you need to do whatever you want. You need to follow your heart. Whatever you want to be, whatever you want to do, that's what you ought to do. We create our own heaven. We create our own hell. We created God in our mind. We are God. That's what people will try to teach. That's humanism right there. That basically man is God. But we see in the Bible, there's that which is earthy, but then there's also that which is heavenly, that which is spiritual. And every one of us in here today, we all bear the image of the earthy. We all look like the earthy. I can tell you all are human beings just from looking at you. And I can tell all of you are sinners just from looking at you. And I can tell that all of you are going to die one of these days. Because you're sinners. Because you're human. And you, in this condition, are not going to get into heaven. Flesh and blood cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. So how are we going to get into heaven? You must be born again. Being born of man, being born of this earth will do nothing for you. Y'all are great people. I love you. But just being you is not good enough. Flesh and blood cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. You must be born again. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. And except ye be born of water. What's what? Water birth. The natural birth. You have to be born you have to be a human first. You got to come into this world, except you be born of water and of the Spirit. Amen. You cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. And just because you are a person today, just because you are a human, I don't care how good you are. I don't care what line of people you're from. I don't care that you are a human and that you're created in the image of God. You also bear the image of the earthy. You are sinful. You deserve to die, to die and go to hell. We all do because we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And if you're going to go to heaven today, you must be born again. You have to have a spiritual birth. There are preachers out there, well-known preachers, that have said that some people are just born Christians, just natural born Christians. That's a lie. 
You must be born again. Nobody is born a Christian. You are born in the image of Adam, in the image of the earthy, and you must be born again. Adam represents the flesh, and Christ represents the spirit. We are born of water before we are born of the spirit. Earth is full of natural born people, but heaven will only be populated by spiritually born people. You do not get to heaven by the work of your hands, Cain. We might have some Cains in here today. You're not going to get to heaven that way. You don't get to heaven by who your parents are, Ishmael. It has nothing to do with that. And you don't get to heaven because you're a human being, Adam. You must be born again. We see, we're not going to go into all the scriptures. They, over and over the Bible says God is no respecter of persons. God doesn't look at you and see where your lineage is and where you come from and say, oh, I'm going to let you in because of who your parents are. God is no respecter of persons. You must be born again. God doesn't look at you and say, you know what, you've sinned too much. You can't be saved. You know, you're not so bad. I will save you. The Bible just says, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. The Bible says that the blood of Christ can cleanse us from all sin. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. God will save anybody that will believe in him. Anyone that will call on him. Cain, Ishmael, Adam, you must be born again. Every one of you must be born again. Flesh and blood cannot enter the kingdom. And right there at 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Now I'm getting a little excited here, folks. But for the next verse, verse 51, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. And that takes us back to last week's message where we see the rapture where we, take, we get rid of this corruptible body and we put on incorruption. We get rid of this mortal body and we put on immortality right there. I'm still in the image of Adam, but one of these days when Christ returns in the clouds and I see him, I'm going to be like him. I'm going to shine like the brightness of the sun. I'm going to have a new body, a spiritual body, one that's like Christ. And 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 14, how do I get that? How do I do that? The other rapture passage that we looked at last week, first it says, if we believe that Jesus, uh, if we believe that Jesus died, I'm in 1 Timothy. I'm getting too excited here. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Sleep in Jesus. Why? Because we're going to die one of these days because we are bearing the image of the earthy. We have a sinful body that's going to die. It's going to be put in the grave. But if you've been born again, if you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, one of these days he's coming back. He's going to resurrect us. He's going to change our body. And it is going to be one like Christ, a spiritual body. We're not going to be clothed with this mortality anymore, with immortality, with the heavenly. And we will be able to be with Christ. And how do you get that? You have to believe in Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Why would you want to do what Cain did? It didn't work. Why would you want to do what Ishmael does? That doesn't work and you can't help it. You can't help who your parents are. You can't help where you came from. It has nothing to do with it. And Adam, we're all that. The only way you're going to get into heaven, it's not because you're a human, it's because of Jesus Christ and you must be born again. You're born of the water first, born of the spirit later. The elder, all right, and you see, we've seen in the Bible guys like Esau and Jacob. Well, who was the preferred one? The younger one, wasn't it? We see that all the time. In the Bible, you see a certain man had two sons of the story of the prodigal son. You had the elder son that was obedient, that did all the things he was supposed to do, maybe to represent the Jewish nation. You've got the younger son, the Gentiles, who what did he do? He wasted his life. He went, I mean, just went and lived like the devil. But you know what? He got right. And he came back. And you see in that story, that older brother, he had a problem with the younger brother, didn't he? Every time you see that in the Bible. And we're still fighting that today. People who are trying to work their way into heaven can't stand what we do and what we teach. But this is what works. People who are of certain religions or classes or families think that they are better than us and can't have a problem with the fact that we're nobodies. And yet God saves us. And then you've got people today that are just feel like, I'm humans. I'm human. I, I deserve whatever. We make whatever. That's not the case. That doesn't work. 
You must be born again. Anyone that's going to heaven today is because they put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And you can do that today. You can do that. Man, we'd love to take a Bible and show you how you can know for sure you're on your way to heaven. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Stop trusting in your own works. It's not going to be acceptable. God will not accept them. God can only accept that which is perfect and holy because He is holy. We are unrighteous, but His Son, Jesus Christ, was righteous. He shed His righteous blood on a cross for us. And when we call on Him, He cleanses us with His blood from our sins. And we now are acceptable to God. Thanks to Jesus Christ. So with that, I want us to all stand together with our heads.